What camera should my church buy for live streaming in 2022? If you're asking yourself that question, maybe you're in a spot where you're building a new live streaming system for your church from scratch, or maybe you're wanting to upgrade some dated cameras. Well, there are a gazillion camera options out there. And in this video, I hope to save you a ton of time and headache by giving you a brief overview of the best camera options for churches when it comes to a live streaming or broadcast environment. I'll also be covering more budget-friendly camera options, kind of more medium-range price camera options, and the more premium, high-budget options. If we haven't met yet, my name is Jake Goslin. I'm a worship leader. I'm also the founder of Church Front, and our team partners with the local church to help you build a thriving and tech-savvy worship ministry. So check out worshipministryschool.com if you would like to work with myself and our coaches personally to help take your worship ministry to the next level. First, let's talk about the camera specs that actually matter when you're shopping for a camera for your live streaming setup. Because when you go shopping for cameras, you're gonna be bombarded with all sorts of information pertaining to specifications like resolution and the sensor size and um, you know what's the frame rates and the, the bit depth and all these fancy words that are gonna overwhelm you. Let me cut right to the chase of what you need to look for. So the first thing you need to pay attention to is sensor size. You want to make sure that your sensor size is micro four thirds or greater. There are some cases where you can get away with smaller sensors, especially with PTZ cameras. We'll talk about that later. But for the most part, if you just want the best quality image that's not going to be grainy, it's going to have good color, good dynamic range, get micro four thirds or higher. So you can see on this image here, this is a micro four thirds sensor. Usually it comes with cameras that look like this. And then as I move to the left of the uh, chart here, we're gonna get all the way up to medium format. That's usually way too huge. Uh, most cameras I'm gonna be recommending are gonna be micro four thirds, APS-C, um, and then super 35 and or full frame. The next important concept I want you to keep in mind is dynamic range. This is a camera's ability to maintain detail in the image in the very brightest parts of the image as well as the darkest parts of the image. This is one of the easiest way for you to tell whether you're looking at a video or photo taken by a cheap camera or a really expensive camera. So on the left here, you have an image taken by a cheap camera with a very small dynamic range. Look out, the bright parts of the image here are completely blown out, they're white, you can't see any detail or color in the sky, and then same thing in the dark parts of the image, you don't see any detail uh, when it comes to the, the top of the ceiling there in that walkway. Whereas on the right side of this diagram here, you have a high dynamic range image where you can see the color of the sky, and then you can see the detail of the darker parts of the image. That is good. That's what we want. We want a wide dynamic range. And then finally, the last thing I want you to consider is lens quality. The glass or lenses that you put on your camera bodies is very, very, very important. It has a huge uh, effect on the, the overall quality of image that you're going to be sending to your church's live stream. So most of the cameras I'm gonna be recommending here have detachable lenses. You can buy cheap lenses, you can buy a little bit more expensive lenses, and you can buy really high-end lenses. I think the kind of mid-range lenses that cost anywhere from maybe $200 on the low end to $1,000 on the high end, those are gonna get you the best results. Lenses have a huge effect on how sharp the image is gonna be, as well as how much depth that you're gonna have uh, with the image, depending on what your aperture is capable of or your f-stop, that's another uh, name for that. So so those are the most important specs to look out for, sensor size, dynamic range, and lens quality. Now let's dive into my live stream camera recommendations for 2022. First, we have the Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K Plus or Pro. This camera came out in late 2021. I'm very impressed with the specs that I'm seeing here. I will admit I do not have this camera myself. I have the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which is kind of like the brother to this camera, has identical specs when it comes to the sensor and the image quality. Um, but this camera was specifically created for a broadcast studio environment, which pretty much happens to be most environments for churches these days, where you have cameras that are just gonna live on tripods the majority of the time, and they just have to send out an image from the HDMI jack or the SDI jack to your video switcher. 
So this camera is only $1,300 for just the body for the plus version of the studio camera. I think that's an incredible value. It also has a built-in seven inch viewfinder, which is great for manual operation. At our church, we actually have all of our cameras stationary. We just bounce around four different angles. But if you're gonna have a dedicated follow camera operator, um, you gotta think about what they're gonna actually uh, be viewing the, the shot from. And it's great how this camera has a beautiful seven inch inch you know, very high definition screen, so they're gonna be able to frame a shot properly. They're gonna be able to make sure the uh, focus is pulled properly as well. Um, that's really important if you're gonna have a manually operated camera on a tripod. Plus it also has a little tally light as well, so they know when their angle is, is live, as well as the people on stage will see the tally light on this camera. This camera has a fantastic camera sensor. It's micro four thirds, so it's big enough to let in enough light. It's got all the fancy uh, dual native IS so, so it's going to perform well in lower light, and you could put some great micro four thirds lenses on there. It's also going to have an awesome dynamic range, so it's going to maintain the detail in the highlights and in the shadows. So with a Micro Four Thirds mount, you can get a speed booster if you want to use the nicer Canon uh, EF line of lenses, like the L lenses. There's probably some sort of adapter if you want to use the RF lenses as well, if you really want to have the, the latest and greatest on there. And then what's really cool about this line of cameras is that it's very compatible with the ATEM Mini, the ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Extreme. You can control like a lot of the features on uh, these cameras if you have the ATEM Mini switchers and you're going directly HDMI uh, or SDI into those switchers. Lots of details we could dive into with this camera. I'm not gonna do it in this video. Search YouTube, there's all sorts of great reviews that will unpack the specs uh, so that you will further understand whether or not this is the right situation for your church. But if I were to go ahead and buy new cameras this year, uh, we don't really need any, any new cameras right now, um, but if I were to buy a new camera, it would be this one. My next recommendation is the sibling to the studio camera. That is the uh, Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. This camera has been out for a few years now. This is the camera that we use at South Fellowship Church. So if you look up our live stream on YouTube, just search South Fellowship Church, you'll see our live stream. You'll see a setup that uses four of these cameras with micro four thirds lenses and Canon uh, EF lenses with a speed booster. That's what, that's what you get, and I'm very happy with the results we get with these cameras. Again, same price point, $1,300, uh, and it's a bit more versatile for other creative projects or maybe handheld work. The studio camera is not really designed to be a handheld camera, uh, whereas the pocket cinema camera is designed to be more handheld, so if you want kind of a moving camera operator, you could even stick on a, a, a wireless HDMI transmitter on there as well. Or maybe you have other creative projects you want to do for your church during the week, like interviews or other you know, sermon bumper videos or things like that. This camera might be uh, just better for that because it has you know, a built-in uh, CF card slot where the studio camera doesn't. It's really just going to send a, a video signal out to your switcher. You could plug a hard drive into the studio camera, but this camera, to me, is a bit more versatile if you have a lot of other creative uh, type of work you want to do for your church. Again, it has a micro four thirds sensor with awesome dynamic range. And then you have the micro four thirds lenses that you can use that are a great bang for your buck. Or you can get a speed booster if you want to use higher end Canon lenses. And what's really cool is the sensor in this camera is pretty much identical with the sensor in the studio camera. So if you wanted to mix and match them, um, you could have maybe one studio camera with a larger screen for like a manual operator. And then maybe all your other angles could be stationary um, and they could be these cameras or you could have two studio cameras, two cinema cameras. I don't know. You can do whatever you want. But the most important thing is that these cameras will, will match because they all have the same color science and you can easily load up the same LUTs in the camera. And that's another important thing I do want to emphasize when you're shopping for new live stream cameras, try to stick, you know, within the same make and model of cameras. So you're not having to worry about matching color between uh, different camera bodies because they're going to look different and that's going to look weird on your live stream. So go all black magic, you know, pocket cinema or studio, or go all uh, Canon or some of these other models that I'm going to talk about here, or go all Panasonic, because uh, then those will match up together very well.
And I do want to mention again, if you need help designing a custom live streaming solution for your church, go to worshipministryschool.com forward slash apply or click the link below this video and you can schedule a free strategy session with one of our coaches and we'll be able to decide whether or not our program is a great fit. So check that out uh, below. Moving on. Our next favorite camera recommendation are the, it's actually a series of cameras. It's the Sony A6000 series. The A6000 has been out for a while, and then there's the 6400, 6500. The, the numbers just keep going up. I can never keep track of all of them. But these are great uh, cameras. These cameras are great because they start at around $700, so they're a bit more budget-friendly. They have the APS-C type sensor, which is a pretty large sensor. You're going to have, again, uh, better performance in low light, and you're gonna have you know more depth to your image. You can use some really nice lenses with it. Uh, the E-mount lenses by Sony are great, or you can get E-mount by Sigma. I really like Sigma lenses for a bit more of a, a budget-friendly option. And then you have your basic 1080p HDMI out. It's gonna be probably a mini HDMI cable. You'll wanna convert to a full-size HDMI or SDI to get to your switcher. And then get a dummy ba uh, battery power supply. It's like a fake battery with a power adapter plugged into it that you can plug the camera into an extension cable into the wall. So then you don't have to worry about your, your battery dying on you. So this is my favorite recommendation for, you know, entry level camera that's still going to get you a great uh, quality result. So if you're on a tighter budget, consider this line of cameras, or you could also cons consider the black magic cameras if you shop used or the next recommendations I have, uh, the Panasonic cameras, you can shop those used as well. So don't always feel like you need to go buy brand new cameras from B&H or Amazon. Go to eBay, you know, look up these camera models. You could save a ton of money just getting used camera bodies. And, you know, you don't have to be super fussy about, you know, how many photos we're taking on those cameras, if they can do photos well. Um, uh, just make sure the sensor looks like it's clean on it and it's just going to be sitting on a tripod in your worship center for the rest of its life. Um, I, I wouldn't be too worried about just getting a used camera to do that job. My next favorite cameras to recommend in 2022 are the Panasonic GH series cameras or the BGH series cameras. So here's why I like these cameras. They're around the $2,000 price point, um, especially you can get those for less if they're used. The GH series cameras are very well-rounded and great for broadcast or creative projects. Um, the BGH series cameras, that's the box camera, uh, it's a great for a, a low profile and more stationary broadcast setup if you just want a camera you know, just to be stuck somewhere um, all the time, stationary shot. Uh, it's great. And then uh, the Micro Four Third sensors and lenses, um, just like the Blackmagic cameras, um, you can use the same same lenses. And then you have in-body stabilization, specifically on the GH series, not the BGH series. So get the GH series if you want in-body stabilization, which is going to be great if you're moving that camera around um, or even if you put on like sliders and stuff. It's just going to eliminate all of the small vibrations and, and jitters that you could get in your image because it has that stabilization built into the camera body. The GH6 should be coming out any month now. I'm not sure when that's going to be released. I'm excited about that camera because the GH5 is still one of my favorite cameras. It's been out for like, I don't know, five, six years at this point. And um, I, I've, I've shot so many videos, so many videos on this channel with the GH5. We still use it for some of our you know additional angles we do when we make courses or when I shoot TikTok videos. The GH5 is such an awesome little workhorse camera. And that's probably one of the best values you will find right now if you're looking on the used markets because the camera's been out for a long time. Lots of people are offloading them now. But for a live stream camera, it could look really, really great for your church's setup. Lastly, I want to talk about premium camera options. So first, we've got the Canon cameras. We've got the C200 cinema camera or the C70 camera. The C70 is this one right here. I'd actually would lean more towards the C70 because it has a nicer camera sensor. It's a newer. Um, and again, this camera could be really great for other creative projects at your church. I love Canon cameras. Actually, the C70 has the same sensor as the camera that I'm using right now, the C300 Mark III, but it's like half the price of the C300 Mark III. Another popular option for a more premium broadcast look has been the RED uh, Komodo. So this is a camera similarly priced to the uh, C70, although 
Keep in mind with red, you've got to spec it out with another couple thousand dollars worth of, you know, a monitor and in a cage and you know handle all that stuff. You're really just getting the brain when you buy a, a red Komodo. And then of course you got lenses, but. I think it has a 6K sensor. Uh, you know, it's a cinema camera. All these cinema cameras uh, that we're looking at here on this page, they all have um, you know larger sensors, right? So Super 35 sensors, uh, potentially bigger. They have very, very high dynamic range. So that's why when you look at the live streams of the bigger churches out there, like Bethel, they're using Red Komodos now, um, or Red Rocks Church uses all C200s. That's why the image just looks so phenomenal, because they have these amazing sensors, as well as some amazing lenses. Uh, and then finally, maybe look into the Sony FX series. I personally don't have a lot of experience with this series of cameras, but um, I know Sony makes some amazing cameras, and I'm actually kind of considering these for my own personal camera upgrades in the near future. They have um, the FX6 and the FX3 is the newer, smaller one. Um, but I would say more popular options right now would be the Komodo or um, the C70, C200. Jake, but what about PTC cameras? I want the ability to remote control and pan and tilt uh, and zoom my camera from 100 feet away in my little uh, tech booth. Yes, we have PTC cameras. I'll give my uh, recommendations for those. I would highly recommend uh, this premium option, the Canon CRN500. So this camera has a one inch sensor. My, my problem I usually have with PTZ cameras are the sensors are very small, like as small as the sensor in your iPhone camera, which means it's uh, in a very low light situation or even you know, not even that low light of a situation. It's going to look grainy. You're not going to have much depth in the image. That's why I generally like to avoid PTZ cameras at, at all costs. I think the ability to, to pan, tilt, zoom is kind of overrated, but that's just my opinion. Um, but I'm also saying that as someone who has a four camera live stream that everything's stationary, and I would just rather have those higher quality images that are stationary rather than uh, you know a joystick that I can move my cameras around with. So um, if you're going to get a PTZ camera though, get this one. If you are on a tight budget and you need to still get a PTZ camera, then check out PTZ Optics cameras. Um, again, smaller sensors. The lens optics isn't that amazing, so it's going to be grainy, not as sharp, but you get the convenience of PTZ. They can also send video over NDI and, and do all that fancy stuff as well. I know I covered a lot in this video. Those are my favorite recommendations for best live streaming cameras for churches in 2022. To be honest, I don't feel like a lot has changed in the past maybe year or so, or even year and a half. Uh, we had a lot of new cameras come out and like, you know, 2020, um, some more in 2021. And, and now we're seeing some really impressive ones like uh, the, the studio camera. I would say, the reason I put that one first out of this entire list, I think the Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K, the, the, the Plus or the Pro are gonna be a great option for your church. The Plus, I think is gonna work for the majority of churches who need that camera. The Pro, if you want some of those advanced you know, connections like more SDI ports and you know the comms port and audio, go for it if you wanna spend an extra $700 on it. Um, but I know for us, we would just go for the Plus because we're fine with the HDMI out and that's really all we need the camera to do. I'm gonna link all the cameras that I listed in this video in our worship ministry toolkit. It includes all of my favorite resources for worship ministry, whether uh, it's for broadcast, whether it's for audio, lighting, tracks rig, monitoring, etc. So check out the worship ministry toolkit. And as I already mentioned, if you want to accelerate your progress in upgrading the tech at your church, then check out worshipministryschool.com where we've got all the coaching and courses you will need to make that happen. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.